Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral on this Monday, January the 22nd. I'm Rose Duncan Cannon for worship. and We're so pleased you decided to join us this morning for our service of prayer and reflection. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us pray. O God of mercy, grant that the word you speak this day may take root in our hearts and bear fruit to honor you and glorify you for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear these words from a portion of Psalm 89. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn and higher than the kings of the earth. I will keep my love for him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. The reading comes from the third chapter of the Gospel according to Mark. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first trying up the strong man, then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemes they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Today in the life of the church, we remember Vincent, deacon, and martyr. Vincent was a native of Huesca in northeastern Spain and was ordained as a deacon by Valerius, Bishop of Saragossa, who commissioned him to preach throughout his diocese. In the early years of the fourth century, a fervent Christian community in Spain fell victim to persecution ordered by Roman emperors. Dacian governor of Spain arrested both Valerius and his deacon Vincent and had them imprisoned at Valencia. According to one account, Valerius had a speech impediment, and so Vincent was often called upon to preach for him. When the two prisoners were challenged to renounce their faith amid threats of torture and death, Vincent said to his bishop, Father, if you order me, I will speak. Valerius is said to have replied, Son, as I committed you to dispense the word of God, so I now charge you to answer in vindication of the faith which we defend. 
the young deacon then told the governor that he and his bishop had no intention of betraying the one true God. The enthusiasm of Vincent's defense showed no caution in his defiance of the judges. And Dacian's fury was increased by this exuberance in Christian witness. Valerius was exiled, but the angry Dacian ordered that Vincent be tortured. Although the accounts of his martyrdom have been heavily embellished, Augustine of Hippo writes that Vincent's unshakable faith enabled him to endure grotesque punishments and finally death. Vincent's cult spread rapidly throughout the early church and he was venerated as a bold and outspoken preacher and witness to the truth of the living Christ. He remains an important model for ministry of deacons, not only in doing works of justice and mercy, but also in proclaiming and teaching the truths of the Christian faith to the church and to the world. Almighty God, whose deacon Vincent upheld by you was not terrified by threats nor overcome by torments. Strengthen us to endure all adversity with invincible and steadfast faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us now offer the prayers of our hearts to God. That this day and all our days may be full of your praise. We pray to you, O Lord, that you will keep us this day without sin. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may walk before you in the paths of righteousness and peace. We pray to you, O Lord, that you will bless your people and lift them up forever. We pray to you, O Lord, that you will guide and protect us by your Holy Spirit and bring us with all your saints to glory everlasting. We pray to you, O Lord. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.